Today I'm going to be discussing the white line woodcut method. This is a great way to hand print editions or monoprints from a single wood block at home. So what you need for this project are some watercolors, brushes, a wood block. I'm using half inch birch veneer plywood, some carving tools, drawing materials, and something to seal the block with. I am using some acrylic clear gesso, but you could use gloss medium or polyacrylic if you have that. So I'm working from a sketch that I drew. It's a six by nine design um, that will fit right in the center of the block. And what I'm essentially doing here is tracing it on the reverse side of the paper. I've taped it up to the window, which is acting as a light table or a tracing box. And I'm just pre-flipping the image because when you print from a wood block, uh, the image is always going to print in reverse. You get a mirror image. So what I'm doing is pre-flipping the image so that when I go to print, it'll flip back into the original orientation that I had intended for the design. So to prepare my block, I'm just drawing a template here. Essentially, I've got a 6 by 9 image area in the middle of my block, and I've calculated an even border all the way around that will accommodate an 11 by 14 sheet of paper. So 11 by 14 is pretty standard size. You can get drawing paper or printmaking paper on a pad, um, or you can tear down some printmaking paper. So to transfer my image onto the block, I don't have any transfer paper. Uh, you could use graphite, carbon paper, or... Uh, even Sorol transfer paper. I'm making my own though since I don't have that. I'm using a stick of Conte and I'm just totally saturating that side of the sheet, cutting it down. It just needs to be slightly larger than your image area. So I'm going to tape that in place and I'm going to tape my drawing down in place over that and trace it again, this time using a hard pencil and that's going to transfer those lines down onto that block really well for me. I didn't have too much smudging until the very end of my carving process, so as you'll see, um, there's a little residue of Sharpie on the image area, and that's because I went and traced the cactus part of my drawing uh, with some marker so that I could actually see it while I finished my carving. So the next step is to seal your block. Um, I'm using some clear gesso, but you could use gloss medium or anything that will waterproof the block so that you can clean it off uh, without worrying about damaging it, having it warp over time, and then you can try different color combinations, different media, and create monoprints for a nice long time. So getting ready to print, I'm using a sheet of masa, which is basically like a very thin printmaking paper, sort of a, a bleached mulberry paper type of feel. And I am uh, lining it up with my outer border there. In this particular case, the sheet's actually a little bigger than 11 by 14, so I'm lining it up uh, a little over the top on, up there and I'm going to use that tape to make a hinge so that I can just flip the paper back out of the way and when I get ready, when I'm done with the print, I'm actually going to just tear it right there at the tape so I don't even have to worry about removing the tape from the back. So just move it up out of the way. You don't want to bend it hard obviously so if you need to stick something in the way to keep it from flipping back down on you, you can do that. So my palette's over here on the side. I'm using some tube watercolors, but you could use dish watercolors, and you could totally use oil paints or slow-drying acrylics if you wanted. For my uh, palette, I'm just using some wax paper since I didn't have a watercolor palette here at home with me. Also got two cups of water. One is a clean cup, and that is for mixing color and adding water back to the palette. The other is for rinsing your brushes off. So I'm starting in the top corner with a couple of different greens and I'm just blending them right there on the block. Um, you really want to work in small sections at a time. It makes printing much easier. If you try to paint, for example, the whole image area before printing any of it, most of it will likely have dried by the time you're done doing that. And if you had a press, it wouldn't be hard to dampen some paper and maybe lift that watercolor off, but by hand it is not easy. And hand printing dampened paper is a bit risky as well. So now I'm going to flip my paper down, and to start printing I'm going to just rub it with my hand a little bit, kind of activate it, keep it from moving around. This plastic vinyl applicator worked really well, but I also experimented, as you'll see throughout the video, 
with a wooden spoon and a speedball printing baron, just a very inexpensive printing baron. So there you can see the color is actually coming through this very thin sheet of printing paper. And you can hardly see it, but it's right there at the top of the screen. I'm going to move on to some other areas of this image. A nice thing that I discovered is that you could layer color wet and wet on the paper by simply printing in quick succession. So as you see, I just layered those uh, shadows in and the yellow area is still wet, so I'm dropping some of the same color onto those shapes and it blends nicely right there on the paper and creates kind of a softer effect. I didn't even print with an applicator or with a spoon at that point. I just did it by hand and it was wet enough that the damp wet paper absorbed that extra paint right away. So here you can see the finished first print on the masa paper. I like the quality of the masa paper, but I also wanted to try a thicker paper. So this is a sheet of Somerset paper. Um, it's a very fluffy uh, and kind of thick paper. And it really held up well to layering the colors and building up a more saturated final image. It allowed for some subtleties, and I was really able to, as you can see in some parts of the image, drop multiple colors in um, and really develop it nicely.